We're going to read this passage of Scripture. Um, Philippians 4.13 and 4.19 are actually very famous verses. But when you read them in context, they actually take on a whole completely different meaning. So we're going to read them, but I want you to, as we read them, read them in context, but think of them in terms of missions work, our missions work around the world. Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 10 is where we'll start. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. But I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account." But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray and then we'll get into a, a short lesson on missions tonight. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for what you have taught us already in the singing of the hymns and the reading of your word and the hearing from our missionaries. And now, Lord, we ask that you would take us another step, deepen our understanding that we might minister more effectively. We ask this in the precious name of Christ. Amen. The reality is missions work has never been free. It has always cost money to send someone with the gospel around the world to get it where it's needed. It's always cost money. God's people, either individuals or churches, have always been the means of funding these efforts. As you read Philippians, though, and many of other Paul's other writings, you get the sense that this was more than just a financial arrangement. As you're reading through this, Paul's talking about them sending him money, but you don't sense that this is just strictly a check that they received in the mail every month, as it were. You sense that there is a friendship here. There is a partnership. It's very important that our missions work, however it's set up, maintains. It's got to maintain the attitude of friendship, partnership, or the effectiveness of it is lost. The means of support of missionaries has not changed down through the years. It has always been done by individuals or churches. But these days we're a little bit more organized. Now, organization is fine as long as we do not lose sight of our responsibility. As long as we know what we're doing and we keep doing what we're supposed to be doing, we keep the re relationships the way that they're supposed to be so that missionary work can exist as it's supposed to. Now the lessons that we've been giving on these missions nights is in order to help you understand missions in a deeper way so that you can know what's going on, why it's going on, and so that all of us are better equipped to deal with missionaries. Tonight we're going to discuss a very simple lesson on the main organizations that missionaries deal with. Each organization has a function, but all those organizations have to be, if one of them drops the ball, the whole thing, we, we get into trouble. It hinders the overall work. And so when we understand the process, it helps us to make sure that we're doing our part. And so let's deal very quickly with this. It's actually three organizations that a missionary deals with. The first organization that a missionary deals with is the sending church. A sending church. I hope it's no surprise to you that we believe in the local church. 
the local New Testament church. A missionary is sent out from a specific local New Testament church. In our world, this is non-negotiable. A church, a missionary must have a sending church. I was talking to a mission director, uh, it's been maybe two years ago, and he said, yes, we have this guy who applied. And he put down his sending church. And when I called the sending church, the pastor said, we told that guy we would not send him out. That is a problem. Because a sending church has responsibilities. So let's work through what is the, uh, the, the, the responsibility of a sending church. Number one is to recognize God's hand of approval. A local body recognizes that God has put his hand on someone. When we ordain somebody, we are not approving them. God has already approved them. We are just recognizing that fact. And God, a body of believers can sense when someone is being called into the ministry. If somebody would stand up today and say, I believe God has called me to the mission field, this church body should not be shocked at that. Because it is part of the opportunity, part of the responsibility of this church to sense these things. And I'll tell you what, if somebody stood up and said, I think God's called me to foreign missions, and everybody gasped, like, what? We have a problem here. Because this is one of the functions of a local church. The Lord helps us to recognize the people that he's sending out. So that is the first responsibility. The second is that a sending church will support financially. I think it's always a problem if you call and the, guy, the missionary is a, has a sending church and you say, how much is your sending church supporting you for? And he says, well, they're not supporting me. That's a problem, okay? Because a sending church generally will support at a higher level. They take you on, they're backing you, and so they'll take you on for a more generous amount than what they would typically support. The third responsibility is to oversee the work. They're the eyes and ears for the missionary. They oversee what's making, going on. They make sure that this missionary is staying doctrinally sound. They make sure that this missionary is staying financially honest. They're making sure that the missionary is actually doing the work. Would it shock you to find out? Uh, John Rhodes tells a story, I believe it is, where they sent a guy... The church has gotten a little nervous, and so they paid their pastor or some guy, and they sent him to where this country was, and the guy was just sitting out on the beach doing nothing where he was at. He was just writing his prayer letters out there on the beach. And, okay, somebody has to keep track of this. The sending church, it's their responsibility to make sure that the guy that they are backing, the guy that they are the, the sending church for, is actually doing the work. Their other responsibility is they're the first line for help and advice. If a missionary is on the field and he doesn't know what he should do, he's got some difficulties, then the, the sending church is his first line for help and advice. And their fifth responsibility is to communicate to the other churches, the supporting churches, if a need arises. The sending church knows what their missionary is doing that they've sent out, and when there's a need there, or some problem, it is their job to communicate with all of the other churches. If you want to summarize the sending church, they are the eyes and the ears for all of the support, other supporting churches, both positive and negative. One of our missionaries, this has been quite a while back, but one of our missionaries left the field and never even told his sending church. That, my friend, is a problem. There's a breakdown in that communication, and there's a breakdown in that relationship, and that is a severe problem. When we're picking missionaries, there are some churches who do not understand what the business of a sending church is. And therefore, we actually, are there some churches with their mission, if they are the sending church for a missionary, we will not take that missionary on because they do not know their business or they refuse to take the responsibilities that are entailed with being a sending church. That's what a sending church is. The first, the first 
organization that a missionary deals with is the sending church. It's non-negotiable. They must have a sending church. The second organization that a missionary deals with, this one is not, is not mandatory, is a mission board. There are lots of mission boards around the country. If you open up our missions book, you'll know that we have probably two dozen, I'm guessing, mission boards that we have missionaries under. What is a mission board? Well, they're not the sending church, okay? The sending church has its responsibilities, but a mission board uh, is not a mandatory organization. The sending church can actually function as also in this role. But a mission board actually helps with the practical details of getting a missionary, uh, the uh, practical details of a being a missionary. Sorry, I've stumbled over my words there. Their job, the mission board's job, is to assist a missionary in the practical details of being a missionary. They assist with deputation. Now think about, have you ever thought about becoming a missionary and what that would be like? God calls you to be a missionary, so you go off to college, and you graduate from college. Oh, that's pretty straightforward. And now you've got to do deputation. How many of you have actually thought, what would that feel like to go on deputation? Anybody ever? Don't you guys ever step outside the box? <laughs> step outside the box sometimes. Think about how scary, how daunting of a task that would be. Well, the mission board helps kind of rein that in a little bit. The mission board gives you one really valuable piece of of uh, information, they give you a list of churches. Now, this isn't just a list of churches in the United States. This is a list of churches that actually support their missionaries. Now, why is that important? Well, you've got a bunch of phone calls to make, but, okay, I have a list in my folder of I, that I deal with with, with prospective missionaries. There's a list of mission boards that we will not support from. Okay, if you're from that mission board, sorry, I love you and all that, but we are not going to take you on. It's not a possibility here. Okay, now if, we, if we're on the list of supporting churches of missionaries from that board, what does that mean? It means that that mission board isn't on my list. So when the guy calls me, he already has a shot at it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? We already support someone from that board, and so the odds are we might choose, we might pick another one from that board. Also, are all churches missions minded? Do all churches support missionaries? Well, these are churches that actually support missionaries, so they have to have some focus on missions. So this is a hot list. This is an important list, and they'll give it some of the lists. I think that one missionary told me there were 8,000 numbers on this, 8,000 churches on this list. If you can imagine sitting down and starting to call 8,000 churches, but at least you have somebody to call, somebody that's at least a hot prospect or a, t a possible prospect. It weeds through a whole lot. And so that's one of the things that they do. They help you in the details of deputation. Number two, they assist in the details of getting you to the field. Have you ever tried to think about what it would be like trying to move yourself to a foreign country? And to me, the, the, the details on that are mind-boggling. Where would you even start? Did you know, uh, Pam Wheeler asked us to make her a crate to send her stuff over. So I started to work on all the details of this. Do you know that to send a crate out of here, the wood that you have to use is so pricey. It has to be double treated. It can't be actually treated wood. It's got to be, it's got to have a stamp on the side of it that says that it is bug-free, something, 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 something. The crate was so expensive, she ended up buying one because with those, we could, I couldn't even get the lumber here. The crate was so expensive, I don't remember what the crate cost, $1,000 or something like that, for this goopy crate. Bec now, I would have just slapped it together. We had some three-quarter plywood here. I would have made a box that have went around the world, and she'd have gone to the port, and they'd have said, sorry, this can't go. Now, see, a mission board, they deal with this every day. They're sending missionaries off. They know these kinds of details. The details on getting to the field, the details on what you're going to need, the details on passports and visas and all of that stuff, they deal with this every day. They deal with the practical details of getting to the field. Number three, they help with financial matters. 
What does insurance look like when you're living in a foreign country? What do you do in case you have an accident? How do you get out of that country? They have all of these details that they help with on the financial side. What do taxes look like in a foreign country? What, how do you, see, they deal with this all the time, so they have this knowledge, and they, so they help you in the financial matters. They help in emergency situations. They, have a way, they know how to get you out of a country. They know how to deal with these kinds of things. Number five, they give you advice where it's needed. They have history on this. They've been working around the world, and so they have knowledge on some of these things, and so they have give advice where it's needed. And number six, and I think this is a huge one, the cooperation of other missionaries. Now think of the difference. I like to put myself in these kind of positions. I think it'll help you if you will do this. Which would you rather? You call to a missionary, you go through deputation, all that college deputation, you get on the plane, and which would you rather be in? To land in a country that you've maybe only been one time, you know, just to visit, and there's nobody there to meet you, and you've got to try to find yourself a place. Okay, of course, you don't speak that language, by the way. And you've got to find yourself a place. You've got to find your way around. You gotta, there's nobody there when you get off the plane, and you just got to make it happen. Would you rather do that, or would you, when you landed, there's a veteran missionary who meets you at the airport, takes you to his house, Helped you find an apartment. You live with him until you get something going. To me, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Give me number two there. I'll take that one. Well, when you go with a mission board, odds are they already have somebody in your country, maybe a whole group of people in your country. And it gives you that chance to work with someone who's already been there for some time and keep you from making all those rookie mistakes that you know that you would make. And so it just makes life that much more simple, and so having a mission board uh, gives you cooperation with other missionaries. Now, this is not a replacement of the local church. You've got to keep that in your mind. It is not a replacement of the local church. You have a sending church. You could also have a mission board. The third um, organization that a missionary deals with are supporting churches. This is the role that we play. In almost all of our missionaries, we are not the sending church, we are the supporting church. What is a supporting church? What is their function? Well, their importance is they're a broad base of prayer and finances. The supporting churches are a broad base of prayer and financial support. I'll give you an interesting thing to contemplate. Which is better? Missionaries on deputation, if you talk to them, they travel, some of them travel across the country, back and forth across the country, putting on 50 and 100,000 miles, okay, on their deputation trail. And so they get supporting churches all around the country. And so when they come back on furlough, they've got supporting churches all across the country. Other missionaries try to take just one location, and they try to stay in driving distance of all, get all the supporting churches all in driving distance so that during their deputation process they only have a, a, a small radius and during furlough they only have a small radius. Which is better? Your gut, your first instinct is to say, you know, having them all in one location sounds like a much better idea. You know the one problem with that? Does the economy stay the same across the United States? And the answer to that is no. The economy fluctuates from place to place. And if you have all of your supporting churches in one location, and the, if you were all in the Midwest and the farm economy falls apart, all of your supporting churches are going to be hurting very badly. But if you have support all over the country, it helps that support level to, 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 to be more stable. So yes, it's a lot more work, but your stability in your financial support, and so yes, there are pros and cons to both sides of this, and these are the kind of decisions that missionaries have to make. A supporting church, though, what is its responsibilities? Number one, it's to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray. You realize that's you. You are part of this church. You are a supporting church. This is a supporting church, and our number one responsibility is to pray for our missionaries. That's what we signed on for. 
when we all voted, I, I'll take him on, you were voting to pray for that missionary. You were promising that we were going to support you, and that means pray. Number two is financial support. Number three is to help in any way possible. You know, Paul said in the past we've read, you were going to help, but you lacked opportunity. It is our responsibility to seek opportunities to bless our missionaries. Encouragement is mostly needed, but anything that we can do is what we should be doing as a supporting church. We need to help in any way possible. And number four, it is our responsibility to keep track to make sure that the work is being done. You say, well, wait a second, that is the job of the sending church. They are supposed to be making sure that the work is being done. Let me give you the dark side of missions. Not all of the sending churches do that. And it is our responsibility to make sure that the money that we are sending out around the world is being used as it's supposed to be, be used. Just to take the cover off, we had a missionary who had not written us a prayer letter in probably over a year. I called the mission board. You know what the mission board said? That's not our responsibility. They said, oh, he hasn't been writing? Well, that's the responsibility of the sending church. So I called the sending church and said, hey, what's going on here? They said, oh, he's not written us a le your letter. The sending church said that. Oh, he hasn't written a letter? I said, no, he has not written a letter, and we need to know what's going on. Said, oh, we'll get that taken care of, and there will be a prayer letter in the mail within a couple of weeks here. We'll make sure that he gets one out. Weeks went by, weeks went by, weeks went by. I called the, the mission board again and said, hey, what do we got going on here? I called the sending church again. What do we got going on here? Nothing. The missionary is not in our book any longer. Why? We have a responsibility. God has allowed us to have missions money, and if nobody else does the job, unfortunately, we have to do that job. And to just keep sending money and say, well, it's not our responsibility to watch, is not what the Lord would have us do. And so, unfortunately, we sometimes have to do the work that others don't do. This is our job as a supporting church. This is our main responsibility now. We are not really ascending church for anybody. We are a supporting church for quite a few missionaries, and our job is to pray, to support them financially, to help them in any way possible, to encourage them in every way possible, and to keep track that the work is being done as it should be done. These are the organizations that a missionary deals with. The sending church, non-negotiable. Mission board, could be taken on by a sending church, but there are a lot of help in certain areas. And number three, supporting churches, that broad base of support, prayer, and finances that keeps a missionary on the field. Those are the organizations that a missionary deals with. Let's pray. appreciate you being here tonight. Let's make sure that we are the supporting church we ought to be.